Oh, I'll vlog it, all right. Me and my dragonfly. Okay, so the next up thing on the Corvette is, drum roll please, do a caliper bracket. Let's take a gander here. We have got a dual caliper bracket. That's what you're looking at now. It's gonna be paired up with a nice toe gain bracket, kind of for two reasons. So the tire, the tire, no, the toe arm isn't able to mount back in the factory hole because it would hit this caliper. It's not a design flaw. There's just nowhere else on the knuckle to put this caliper. The new toe arm will mount here on this bracket. And we're gonna have a very small bolt go through here and then the bearing and everything's gonna sandwich it all together. So you can run it in the factory position, zero toe gain, just like you're having on a daily car. Or you can go for like monstrous amounts of toe gain here. It's all adjustable and it's uh, gonna be very user friendly because when it's on the car, you're gonna be able to see it. But I'll show you what I mean on the knuckle. So I have a spare knuckle here. Yep, it's gonna go on just like so, okay? So you see the holes are all lined up and everything looks real good. Everything's real tight. But this is what I mean by the proximity here. So we're gonna bolt it there with a small bolt and then the new toe arm will fasten in here. Bearing goes through like nothing ever happened except you got a nice brand new four pot on her, right? Big John. We're just gonna take everything apart, throw the bracket on, put everything back together. Then, uh, you know, you guys know I already have the handbrake installed in the nice fancy spot. So all we gotta do is put some fluid in it, connect the lines. Then we have a dual caliper, four piston, Willwood hydraulic handbrake on our C6 Corvette, which is everybody's dream. The only thing is you're gonna need to be running Z06 rotors, which look like this. They're big, they're bulky, and they got lots of stopping power, and they're huge diameter. So you won't be able to run this kit with Z, Z51 or base model cap, cap rotors. You won't be able to run this kit with base model rotors, like Z50 or Z51 or base model. Can't do it. Gotta have Z06 or the Grand Sport in order to use this kit. So I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Go to the hardware store, not the hardware store. Go to the car parts store. Buy these big rotors and slap on your Willwood dual caliper bracket. Then you need to get bigger ones of these. Got her zip tied up for safety, but that's the factory Grand Sport or Z06 caliper. It's not gonna be a high volume seller because a lot of people don't have those calipers and I don't know if you can buy them or not. I mostly did it because I can and because I wanted a four piston caliper for my handbrake. And that's what we're here to do, innovate. Nah, I was gonna rhyme that with a bunch of words, but innovate, create, associate, collaborate, and that's all I got. I know there's other words, but not like in the same category. Anyways, this will all go hand in hand with our fancy dancy toe arms. Look at this. So our toe arms are gonna look like this. You guys just saw the video. We can just simply do a toe arm stud delete. And then we put two spacers on here and then that'll slide right into our bracket, okay? So it's gonna be super user friendly. You're gonna be able to use our toe arms on this bracket with factory knuckles. It's gonna be great. Let's get into it, Jack. Let's get the guns out. Not, not these guns, the guns. And let's dive into it. Oh, it wasn't very tight. Got our nut removed. Size 15. One five. Oh, sink. Don't do a twa cat sink. No. Oh, cat. Right? Don't do a twa cat, cat. Sink. 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 Oh, sink. That's what I said first. Sink? Oh, sink. One five. Oh, sink. 
That's right. Candy canes. Ooh, big spring in the way. Nice. Should probably keep the parking brake because I do park with it. We'll see how it goes though. Might just put a ratchet strap around my handbrake handle. Oh, it's bigger. Okay, okay. 45. I'm messing around. Oh. Duh. What a mess. Oh, got a grinder. We gotta flatten this a little bit. See that casting line? Just slightly touches it there. We gotta grind it a little bit. Not a big deal. And we gotta re-drill our wheel bearings. Yee. I'll be right back. Ta-da! This spline is smaller though. We're gonna have to drill these bearings because this one has a baby spline in it, which can be used on the front. It's not that big of a deal. This one's definitely got a bigger spline, definitely. Not to worry. So this could be used on the front, but we're gonna have to re-drill these for the back. No problem, we'll do her up. That's what I made this for. Now we just gotta press in some ARP studs. After this video, I think we're gonna do a big old cleanup. What do you think? We're in a new mill too, so if you thought I was rough on her, it's because I was. So every Friday, Snap-on comes. All the guys go on the truck, they give us good deals, get us good stuff. It's Father's Day weekend, so we've got, uh, gave me this car, it's good for I have two kids, if you guys don't know. Maybe you'll see him one day, but give something for the young lad to play with. Um, he's setting us up with another jack for the shop because uh, I need one to take to the track. I need one that goes low and lifts high and does it quickly. So thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Snap-on. You know the two bolts that we gave with the mini kits? Can you vlog yourself going to grab two? Please? Ah. Yep. 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 That is not going Anywhere, not going anywhere, not going anywhere. Okay.
The moment of truth. Uh, not the moment of truth. We gotta drill the rotor. We gotta drill the rotor still, guys. Pull, 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 pull. Hold, 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 hold. Right? I'm gonna look awfully upset in this video. Because I am, folks. It's a rare sight of Ethan in the wild. It was hard to look at, but I did it for you guys. Anyways, pop a couple holes, sing a couple songs. Can you vlog yourself going to get two, maybe three, M12, one, two, five, 25 mil long with nuts? Thank you, sir. Blast these holes in, that'll go in there. We'll get a rag, we'll clean this all up. And hopefully it works, because if it doesn't, I'm gonna have to put the old studs back in, which I won't be very fun. All right, Jack, we need a rag. There you have it, 5x114 on the old Corvette. 5x114 bearing conversion's done. The dual caliper bracket is installed. The bad news, that wheel isn't gonna fit anymore. I'm gonna miss them. Do we have other wheels here? Not that I know of. Where are those Kensai trailer? Not good. This has been tough. This has been real tough. So the moment of truth is, what's the spacing looking like? Oh, I think it's perfect. It's hard to tell exactly. Let's get this big thing off. It's the heaviest thing by far. Let's throw this back on. So we're here at the car. Jack took a little breather because it's so hot. And I had the, I put it on the car already. So take a look. We've got our dual caliper bracket, sandwiched between the bearing, threaded holes for the Willwood calipers, and our big old toe arm bracketry here. So the way this is gonna work is the lower you mount it, the more toe in under compression you're gonna get. Do you want a bunch of toe in under compression? Maybe not. Put it in the top hole. Do you want a bunch of toe in under compression? Maybe you do. Put it in the bottom hole. Somewhere in between, lots of options, all right? Eliminating the toe arm pickup with the taper stud is going to be easy if you have our toe arms, like I explained earlier. So we're gonna continue installing this, going over everything making sure everything bolts up nice. Again, we got a five by one fourteen bolt pattern now, so we won't be able to use the Corvette wheels anymore. We're gonna have to use uh, our Kansai wheels, which is better, so when we go to the track, we've got lots of five by one fourteen wheels to swap on and start slaying. We've got our rotor up next. Okay, and then we've got our calipers, stock caliper, and the Willwood caliper. Obviously the OEM one's gonna fit perfect, but I wanted to confirm that the spacing of the Willwood bracket is perfect because the caliper actually mounts on the back of the bracket and the bracket itself is threaded, which is opposite to the OEM caliper where the caliper's threaded and the bracket is just a through hole, so. Wow, 
is all I can say. This is quite the setup when you look at it. So the dual caliber brackets installed, everything's nice and free spinning. You can just get a little bit of a clink out of each pad so you know that the caliper is perfectly centered. It, it, was, it was fun. There's a couple things that we got to uh, tidy up on the bracket, which I mean is basically I just need to make the holes bigger, uh, essentially. The hole for the bearing and then the three holes that the bearing bolts go through. Everything was just a bit too tight, which has to really do more with the machine that cut it than it does uh, the actual drawing itself, because the drawing I always oversize, but with the water jet, sometimes you have a curve, sometimes you have whatever, so everything was just a bit tight. So I opened everything up, I'll go to my computer, we'll do that, so that the fitment is like a easier, instead of needing a hammer, it just drops in place. The caliper needed uh, two washers to get it centered, which means uh, the, the, the thickness of the bracket needs to be just a little bit thicker which is fine, uh, that's pretty easy to do. Even though I did all the calculations on the computer for the offset, it was just a little bit off. So we'll perfect that for this Willwood. Other than that, everything's perfect. And then if you come and look over here on this side, to go in relation to the dual caliber bracket, because there is almost no room for a bolt here, uh, because the caliper bolt is right there, uh, basically, you have to have this toe arm relocation bracket, which serves as a toe gain bracket and an easier way to mount the toe arm. So if we show you, basically, I'm going to run it in the least aggressive position possible. But let's say you really wanted to increase your forward grip and you wanted to toe in under compression. You could easily run this in these lower holes, which because of the toe arm angle going down, when it compresses, it's going to push this wheel outward, forcing the rear wheels to toe in. But I'm just going to put it in the most conservative position here. And there, my toe arm is now connected. I just need to tighten everything up. And it's fully on-car adjustable, so I can increase or decrease my toe just with this. It's got the shackle mount at the subframe side. So that's pretty much it for everything that we've installed here. The only thing we have to do is run the lines and connect it to our handbrake that's installed on the, basically beside the transmission tunnel, mounts to the center console. And then all these products are gonna be just tuned up with all the little details that we added. And then we're gonna be able to run with selling this stuff, so. Another note on this, I re-drilled the factory bearings and the rotors. So this is now a 5x114 bull pattern with ARP studs. I bought these uh, open-ended key lugs. The key lugs are nice just because if you have aftermarket wheels, sometimes the holes are super small. So you need like these lower profile ones. They're cheap, they're like 25 bucks a set, they're nice. Um, they're not aluminum, they're uh, hardened steel, so I like that too. Yeah, I mean, just take a nice little pan of it. It looks sick with the Willwood 4 pot on the top. This is run and it needs to be run with the Z06 rear rotor because the rear rotor's diameter is what allowed us to mount this caliper on the knuckle. And let me tell you, it's super close to the knuckle. Like, the caliper is almost touching the knuckle on both points and uh, on some cases because the casting changes you may even need to grind a little bit off either the caliper or the knuckle and when i i mean like barely anything but you may need to do it which when you're doing an install like this and you're drilling rotors and you're drilling bearings and you're putting calipers on that's like the least of your worries it's going to take you like 30 seconds for something like that and if you can't do something like that then i wouldn't suggest trying to install the toe gain bracket with the with the dual caliper Willwood 4 piston. But if you do, you're gonna be super happy because I have the same calipers on my pro car. And let me tell you, doesn't take three fingers, doesn't even take two fingers, it takes one. Hook and pull, baby. Hook and pull, baby. That's not a saying. But it locks really, really easily. Um, and I, I do like a nice effortless handbrake. It, it, 
it really just builds confidence and whenever you want to tug on it or use it it's instant it's there you don't need to wreck anything rip your transmission tunnel off trying to lock the rears it's just like 20 pounds of pressure and she's locked up which is perfect so all in all i think jack got enough footage it, it just took a while to doing all these little things so i'm not sure if he picked up all of it but you guys will see in the video it's pretty sweet so what's up next mini kit on the front um, and then we're gonna take this to the track after plumbing the hydro and installing the mini kit and doing the 5x114 conversion on all four corners. Uh, that'll be pretty much it for this portion of the build. And then we're gonna just keep innovating and keep reverse engineering stuff for the, uh, for the greater good of the Corvette. Stay tuned, hope you guys are enjoying watching all these videos because basically however long it takes me to do it, times it by two and then add another four hours for Mr. Jack to edit it. So we're really uh, putting our best effort into these so that the content's there, you can reference it for parts. Yeah, you know what goes into it. So that's that's huge. I don't, I don't know that anyone's really seen that process uh, with anything else, so. Hope you enjoy it, that's all I'm saying. It's expensive. Mr. Jack's expensive, but he's the best, so. We're trying to get to 10K, so like the video, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the video. We will cook up a 10K giveaway. We'll probably hit it really quickly, and but we wanna make it like a really good giveaway, like either a free angle kit or like a thousand dollar credit to our website, something like that. All things considered, we started in like February or March, posting quite a bit. So, uh, clearly somebody's enjoying it. Yeah. Like, subscribe, and uh, check out our social media pages as well, where we always post snippets or updates or photos or highlights. Yeah, I'm off to FD, uh, New Jersey, in a little bit. Um, so we're gonna try and do a lot better with documenting that as well. It's hard, because we're in Canada and nobody can come across the border with me, so I've got to work with my Drift HQ guys and they're all slammed and busy, but we'll try to do a vlog and process through practice qualifying. Yeah, so see you guys in the next video.